My name is Thomas Colster and I am an ex-advertising guy on a mission to make brands more sustainable. I'm also the founder of the Good Advertising Agency. And today uh, we are going to dive into a very exciting story uh, and I have the Chief Marketing Officer of Kosk & Koba Vodka, uh, Sove Lenikola, uh, with me here today because he has a very interesting story to tell about a groundbreaking new project that Kosk & Koba have just uh, launched. But maybe um, just to kick things off, for those of you who don't know and are familiar with Kosk & Koba, What's the story behind Kosk & Korva Vodka? Yes, um, so basically Kosk & Korva has a long, long history in the Finnish market. It is a brand that was originally launched in Finland in 1953. And it was launched in the village of Kosk & Korva, which is a real place in the middle of Finland, which is basically in the, in the middle of nowhere, but it's right yeah. there. And uh, um, it's a place with real people. The family of Kosken Korva is still living there uh, today. Uh, we work with over 1,500 farmers every day to produce this high quality vodka. And uh, uh, it is basically made from the northernmost barley in the world, uh, the most pure, unfiltered uh, spring water. Uh, that you source directly from the ground so you don't even have to filter it. That's how pure it is. And, uh, and thirdly, we use a uh, continuous distillation process, which just ensures that is the highest quality product that there is. But uh, what we actually are really known for is our sustainability efforts. Uh, since the factory or the distillery that is located in the, in the Finnish village is fully running on buyer energy and has been for many years already. And, um, uh, and not to end there, we also have uh, uh, a recycling rate of 99.9%, which we are very proud of. And we have just launched or kicked uh, off a couple of years ago our regenerative barley journey, which we aim by the year of 2030, having uh, all the Kosken Kora volumes fully regeneratively farmed. Amazing. And I, I absolutely love this heritage story. And, and, and a lot of folks would probably think if just my brand had so much to tell, and yet you've gone full into the sustainability um, uh, space and are committed. And this is not an easy space to operate in. There's tightening regulation, there is rising skepticism mm -hmm. from consumers. And yet you decide, okay, let's, let's put out uh, a, a, um, a line extension uh, called the Kosk & Korvac Climate Action Vodka. So can you just explain a little bit more about the reasoning behind that? Yeah, I mean, it all started with the, with the insight uh, that we found out the fact that if everybody in the world would actually farm regeneratively, we would be able to reduce or take off carbon dioxide from the atmosphere by uh, over 300 billion tons. Uh, and that is 10 times the emissions that is out there today. That's so, numbers, huh? yeah, so it's, it's, it's crazy and uh, and that that was the eye opening thing for us when we found out that that we can start uh, doing that if we start and if we can make everybody else to follow us on that same journey it will make a massive difference it will make a huge difference to um, to the global emissions and and that is what we are highly uh, inspired of but in terms of skepticism uh, which you mentioned i think it's uh, it's something that i fully understand um, a lot of brands, a lot of companies would be there to kind of ride on a trend, yeah. um, say certain things uh, uh, that, uh, that they do a little bit. But I think what is highly important when you do these things is to be super open about the journey that you're on, uh, open about your LCA calculation. And it all starts from there, understanding where your emissions are actually coming from and then being honest about it. And I think, you know, um, I don't think any brand can say that they are 100% sustainable. Um, and neither can we, like it's a journey and we are already extremely far when it comes to our production. Um, but we are also very open about the fact that we still have a lot to do. And I think this is what the consumers want to see, the honesty and they want to understand the rational of, of you doing that. And it all starts from the production, which is like where, which is the basis of your uh, product. Which, which I think is an, a, a, a key lesson as well to take, take away the, the honesty in, in doing these things. But 
I think also another really interesting thing is that marketing isn't just marketing anymore. I mean, you are talking about uh, sort of thinking about new supply chains, uh, you are uh, thinking about innovation, you're thinking about uh, getting uh, sustainability expertise mm -hmm. into the engine room. So how, how do you get all that aligned? How, could, how do you get all these stakeholders motivated to go on a journey like this? Yeah, I mean, we realized quite fast when we kicked off this project that there's no way that we can actually do it uh, on our own. Um, it first started internally that we obviously combined a team, a team of exp expertise like inside the company. We started with the leadership, innovation team, procurement, legal, supply chain, went to the distillery, talked to the farmers, and that's where we understood that we actually don't know how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when we are, all right, we'll help, <laughs> who, can, who can help us? Yeah. And, um, and then that's when we found Baltic uh, Sea Action Group, uh, which is a local organization who helps uh, organizations and companies to re farm regeneratively. And they know exactly how it's done. And more than anything, they know how to measure it uh, in a way that is credible. And it's true that if we do it, it actually makes or has the difference that, it, that we aim it to, to, to be. Yeah, I think that's, that's another thing, the great partnerships and also the honesty about not knowing. And I think that's something that uh, I think us working at advertising are not that comfortable with. So, uh, but, but, but still, I, I think what, what sort of drew me to the project is sort of the boldness of that. And, and believing in bold ideas, and I think it's something that we in, in advertising and marketing forget to do. So what, what, and how did you rally your organization? Because I think, especially coming from the agency side, I think a lot of us, how do we sell these great ideas? But how did you sell that internally? How did you make that move? Yeah, honestly, I think it all starts with the, with the leadership team uh, and having, a, uh, having the whole company behind these ambitions, because if the company doesn't have that vision, if the company doesn't have that passion that then is escalated into every layer, it will never happen. Yeah. And I'm just happy to say that I work in a company where that is the case uh, and that is highly uh, motivating. Yeah. But, um, but I think uh, outside of that, it's a uh, communication thing. Uh, people are quite reser like reserved to change in general. Yeah. Change is, is difficult. It's something that requires time, resources, effort. Uh, and people can be like, okay, why do I need to do this? This is difficult. I like to like stay in my comfort zone, these kind of things. So communicating it to everybody of why we are doing it is easy in this case, because it has such an uh, impact on the environment. Yeah. But that's not enough. It has to have like a purpose for that person, like individuals. It's very human for us to be like, what's in it for me? Yeah. Um, and we made sure that we communicate that to the farmers so that we could have uh, everybody on board. I absolutely love that, especially in a time where uh, the term green hushing is out there, where companies actually shy away uh, from doing initi initiatives like that, just out of fear of, of failure. So. Um, a very, I think, important takeaway is sort of like rallying people around that internal why is, is interesting. Um, another thing which I think you touched on is, is this need for different types of skill sets, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just marketing. Um, and so what skill sets are needed in this uh, sort of new world of sustainable marketing? Yeah. And this was actually a funny story because you know, uh, for one, from the marketing point of view, I think we really had to step out of our comfort zone when it comes to this, because, you know, we have to come mini farmers. All of a sudden, we had to understand uh, fertilizers, soils, crops, pesticides. You, know, you, you said LCA before life cycle assessment. I'm not sure everybody <laughs> knows what that is, I but hope. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, even return yeah, to farming, exactly. so. Right. Yeah. But anyway, it was, like, it was a completely new territory for us. But, you know, once you share the passion, you share the ambition, and it's, you understand the reason why you're doing it, we were all just eager to, to learn and, and kind of get, get to it. Um, but of course, it's uh, also the skill set when it comes to farmers. Uh, they have to understand a completely new way of farming and be motivated in doing that. But one thing I want to mention is kind of like, this is the, the way of doing modern marketing. Uh, and I think that's the case, like as a marketeer, you're used to write a brief, you send it to the agency and 
ask at the agency to come up with a story yeah. uh, that you can tell. And, um, and that's not the case here when you actually do things as a company that makes a difference. It's a story that you can just tell to the world. It's an easy job in a way, but it's also, I think when you are passionate about it and, and you are doing a, a something for a bigger cause, then the consumers can feel it and they follow because they can see the effort that you do as a company. They can see the investment and time and everything that you are put, putting behind it. And, and that's what matters um, and makes a difference. I think definitely in a time where um, marketing is facing so many, uh, so many challenges from, from so many uh, different sides, I think this is also about ex expanding uh, vocabulary and, 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 and ex expanding and being, being open for learning a new language. But I think for the people who haven't seen, not everyone might have seen uh, the, the, the film and the case video, I think it would be a good idea just to roll the film, just to give them a bit more insight and meeting some of the passionate uh, people uh, behind this project. So let's just uh, quickly roll the film for everyone. Usko henkilökohtaisesti, että hiiliviljely tulee olemaan tulevaisuudessa ihan jokapäiväinen asia. Ei sitä erikseen mietitä, että se on hiiliviljelyä, vaan se on, niin kuin, se on, se on hyvää viljelykäytäntöä. We are a big buyer of, of, of barley and we want to promote ways of finding new, more environmentally friendly farming practices. This helps us to strive towards our goal of carbon neutrality and naturally helps us to offer new, more sustainable products for our consumers. Mitä pidemmän aikaa kasvukaudesta me pystytään pitämään pelto vihreänä tai kasvipeitteisenä, niin sitä paremmin ja tehokkaammin sitten on hiilidioksidia ilmasto. Jos meillä on esimerkiksi ohra, sinne alle kylvetään heinä tai apila. Ohra puidaan pois hyvin sajoinen talvea, mutta apilalle jää vielä 2-3 kuukautta aikaa kasvaa, jolloin me saadaan yhteyttävä pinta-alaa sinne myöskin sen satokasvin jälkeen. Carbon Action on yhteistyöalusta, jolla on tarkoitus skaalata uudistavan maanviljelyn menetelmiä. Tässä tapauksessa VSAG on tehnyt seitsemän kohdan listan, jolla sitten auditoidaan näitä ohrapeltoja, miltä se vilja tulee ja myöskin sitä koko tilaa. Meillä on mahdollisuus olla aikamoisia ilmastosankareita tällä työllä, jos me halutaan. So, Suvi, um, do you want to add anything to uh, to the video? Any interesting insights uh, behind this case, and and where where's this project at now? Yeah, I think you can see from the video how uh, many people are involved uh, in the case and how passionate they are uh, with this project. And I think love, one love, of love Jari, the farmer, <laughs> exactly. amazing guy. Yes, the farmer, the the our CEO, yeah. the the uh, Baltic Sea Action Group. And this would never happen without these people. And we are truly thankful that we have all these great people yeah. in this project. Like we could, like said many times, you could never do it alone. And um, where are we with it? Um, this is just the beginning. Um, it was launched successfully a couple of years ago. 
and uh, now we are educating the farmers constantly to uh, to have more and more uh, that are farming regeneratively. Yeah. We currently have actually 20. We started with Yari. Uh, we now have 20 uh, farmers and the aim is to have as many as we need so that all the Koskenkora volume is regeneratively farmed by 2030. And also in terms of communication, uh, we are really going to, uh, that's why I'm <laughs> speaking yeah. here today, because we really want this to go global. Yeah. Uh, because we want everybody to join uh, on this journey. It's not us alone who can make a difference. So I hope that we can inspire a lot of avocado companies to do this as well. I, I hope we can. I, I think those, thus the word climate action vodka is sort of built into that uh, rallying cry. And I think we, we tend to forget, uh, which, which, have, which have seen across brands, that a lot of, of the products we use on a daily basis obviously have an agricultural base. Mm. And there's no doubt about that agriculture is one of the biggest contributors to climate change. And at sort of from a company-wide perspective, changing towards uh, less carbon intensive uh, practices, regenerative practices, it's not an easy journey. Um, for those of you who are out there and are thinking like where, where to begin, do you have any, any good advice on that? Because for me it seems like a very daunting task. Uh, it's not daunting, it can yeah. sound like it, but you know actually like the, the method that is used in farming today is called monoculture. Mm -hmm. And that basically forces all the farmers to use a lot of fertilizers, pesticides that is actually go, like ends up in the in the water bodies and making it toxic for wildlife, uh, for example. And it actually makes the soil worse. It makes the crops less. And by that, it actually re re releases CO2 in the atmosphere instead of instead of storing it back uh, to the ground. And um, Regenerative farming does the opposite. It uh, in increases biodiversity, it uh, makes the crops more and better, and for that reason, restoring the CO2 back uh, to the ground. And um, it's a method that is actually like nature's normal way of well, how the nature would work if you would let it happen naturally. Yeah. It just does like circular economy. And, um, and, and, and that way is just the best way to do farming. And it, it sounds, I hope I was able to, I'm not a master in this, but I hope I was able to explain it in a way that people understand how it's done. And if you go into a lot of details, of course, it starts to be complex. Yeah. But actually, uh, it is something that we are doing today. It's something that all the farmers can do if they, if they focus on, on how it can be done. Yeah. And, uh, and it's actually not more difficult to do uh, than today's farming method is. It's just a matter of learning something new. And see, for Prode, for a lot of the folks, just regenerative farming is something new. So there's a, a new word there in your uh, need to know marketing uh, vocabulary. But, but I think to go back to sort of the communication part, not to scare people away, um, I often talk about this concept that marketing is from Mars and sustainability is from Venus, and that you can sometimes shy away from taking a different conversation about such a you know, novel concept as regenerative farming, or at least complicated concept as regenerative farming. So how do you get that balance right? I mean, how do you make this something that's simple and easy for people to understand? Because it does have, as you said in the mm -hmm. opening, uh, a massive impact on, on, on carbon emissions. So it's, there's a real win-win-win for people, but how to make it simple? Well. It, it sounds, again, it sounds complex, but it actually isn't. Because if you really think about it, uh, when you use regenerative farming practice, what's resulting from that is a true action to the environment. Meaning that by, by farming this way, it actually has a positive impact uh, on the climate. It reduces the climate action in a negative way, which is good. So that's why we named the product climate action because that is the the end result uh, and it's easy to understand for people of what it actually means and then if you want to go into the all the details we are fully transparent on that all the information is available on the website and and all that but i think that's our way of going around it and making it uh, as simple as possible and 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 i i i love the simplicity in it and and again with the name uh but but another key part you mentioned earlier was the 
the collaboration aspect. And mm -hmm. I think it's uh, something that we in marketing traditionally haven't done uh, that much of. And, and this sort of, as, 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 as mentioned in the video, brings a lot of different people together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, from, from the passionate farmer to suppliers to, uh, to everybody else. So how, how do you create and foster those partnerships? Because I think also, essentially from my point of view, that's also one of the things that builds the trust. Yeah, I mean, this whole uh, project started founding, we needed Yari, yeah. <laughs> and we needed a lot of them. So we went to our 1,500 farmers and started talking to them and, and trying to find people who would rally in this project with us. And we were super happy to find Yari Erola yeah. to, to work with us uh, here. And he has been absolutely amazing um, on this journey. And I think that helps because when he was the first one piloting it and, and, and showing how it's done, I think now it's easier for other others to follow um, since it's not as scary anymore when you yeah. see somebody doing it at first hand in your country I mean. <laughs> it does seem like you found a needle in a haystack in, in, in some aspects in, in Yari the farmer. Uh, do you have any good advice for uh, other brands looking to have a sp spokesperson like that because I'm sure that probably there has been some concerns or it probably hasn't been that easy a process. Yeah, I mean, um, for, for us as a brand at least, it's, it's extremely important to find spokespersons who share the same passion for the same causes. So we don't want to uh, go, it's easy to go buy media space, uh, yeah. buy influencers, uh, but we want to work with people who actually care about yeah. these things in the way that we do. And I think that's where we always start. And, and that's why when it comes to farmers, in our case, it's, it's a win-win and easy because they are the ones who actually make it happen. And without them, we couldn't do it. Yeah. So it's, it's people who have a purpose uh, in this that we want to work with. But in general, I think it's, it's good to, um, so that you, if you want to be credible, <laughs> to, to work with partners who are in for the same cause. Yeah, I think you spoke about that why in the beginning, and I guess that sort of also connects with, with Yari, and I think at least for me, and I'm sure for a lot of you watching uh, this case, uh, there's a lot of authenticity in that as well that, 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 that speaks uh, to me. And in so many aspects, uh, you know, we started off with you talking about Koskun Kova, the little village, and, you know, and, and, and when I watched uh, this case, I would say this is definitely not your typical vodka communication about triple distilled, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what has the response been? Did people just think, what the heck <laughs> is going on? Surprisingly not. No? Uh, we actually thought that from the beginning that yeah. people were like, okay, what does this have to do with drinking vodka? And how does it resonate with yeah. me? And do spirits consumers actually care about sustainability? Yeah. And it has been amazing, to be honest. Like uh, uh, when we launched this product, we received so, mu so much global PR, so much interest towards the brand and the company. And I think people really respected the fact that we spent so much time and effort and money and energy into actually make, making this difference uh, and making this change. And I think that's what really resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. No, but I think it's also like, for me at least, it's almost a a, a origin story uh, because if you think about it uh, a lot of people don't maybe to put enough care and effort into what they eat mm. and and what they drink and and so for me this is also a, a sort of story about the ingredients and the background of the ingredients and did people connect with that part as well yeah and I think in the spirits industry in general when it comes to consumers that the taste of the product the quality of the product is the most important thing and driving the purchase factor so I think for us it, when it comes to the northernmost barley that we use the local ingredients that are locally sourced the yeah. pure spring water that is directly from the crown doesn't need filtering these are extremely important factors uh, consumers that is just adding up to the other sustainability things that that we do and actually quite classic sustainability stories mm -hmm. that some brands forget to tell. And I, I think you, you, you managed to do that in, in quite an original um, uh, way here. Um, so one of the things, obviously, I'm sure that must have been some of the fear before launching this product is this whole, as we talked about, skepticism in the beginning, this fear of greenwashing, you know. Uh, what happens if you dare to call a vodka climate action vodka? What will be the pushback? 
what what were some of the considerations you had there? Did did you prepare anything? Did you prepare for a backlash? What what were some of the thinking there? Yeah, I think that going back to what I said earlier yeah. about it is that uh, our route away from greenwashing is the honesty and transparency of everything that we do. Uh, the the greenwashing is a number one showstopper when it comes to sustainability communication in general. And as said, I fully understand that because it's really difficult and complex for consumers to understand if it's true, if it's not. Where are you impacting? Because if you say one thing as a brand that I'm sustainable here, but then the other part is completely uh, not sustainable, then it's not credible. And that takes the, the kind of the, the credibility out of what you are trying to say. Yeah. And, um, and for us, it's, it's, and it's super important to me uh, that, you know, again, we have that calculation that we yeah. fully understand where the emissions are coming from. Like we know for Kosk and Korofa instance that it's mostly about production, it's mostly, mostly about packaging. These yeah. are the, in, typically these are the biggest ones for every brand and every company. And like said, everything starts with the production. With the production, we are already quite far uh, in our process. So we can say already that we are quite sustainable. And then we have full roadmap on what are we doing in every step of the way uh, to be as sustainable as we can and massive things in packaging and, and, and so forth. So in terms of um, greenwashing, just to continue that, I, I guess that sort of no brand is an island and, and Cosc and Cola uh, belongs to a bigger group um, that operates in uh, and across Scandinavia called uh, Anora. So how do you make sure that uh, and the story between Kosk and Korva aligns with what Anora is doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, Kosk and Korva as a brand uh, can't do it alone. The company needs to be behind it. And Anora as a company has very ambitious sustainability targets uh, as well. So by 2050, Anora aims to be fully carbon neutral and have a carbon neutral production by 2030. And again, it's all about understanding where the emissions are coming from, a uh, high focus on uh, packaging and production uh, to make sure that they are as sustainable as possible. Uh, like said, product, production wise, the production sites, uh, we have many, not just the distillery that we have uh, for Kosken Korva, yeah. uh, all of those to be uh, carbon neutral. In terms of packaging, uh, having fully lightweighted bottles by 2030, uh, having using only recycled materials by 2030, uh, there is significant waste reduction uh, targets like wastewater by 20, and I could go on. Yeah. But I think the point here is that uh, that the company is also on the same journey with us, not just the brand of Kosk and Korva. I think that's also important to understand. For me, this has been a real pleasure. I think there's been a, a lot of new language that's being added to the vocabulary here today. But uh, if uh, we had to uh, leave uh, people with sort of three uh, key takeaways uh, from this uh, journey and this bold endeavor, what, what would be your sort of three key takeaways, your three key advice for folks here? Yeah, I think uh, the, the honesty and transparency, uh, again, about knowing exactly where your emissions are coming from and then Communicating that to the people so that they understand and can trust uh, what you are saying is, is key to, to everything that we are doing. Being very clear uh, with the communication when you move into the marketing side is uh, otherwise it will come into uh, corporate communication like with a lot of facts, a lot of numbers, uh, boring. We are just humans, we don't want to be bored yeah. and sustainability can also be fun. Uh, there's a lot of brands out there that are doing it in that way and that is what we aim to do as well. And also be um, brave with it because I said change is difficult. It's difficult for companies, it's difficult for brands, so uh, it requires brave people to make that change. and, and uh, and I hope that everybody could join us in that movement. <laughs> I absolutely love that. And that was a very active encouragement to all of you, uh, which I think would be my one key takeaway is maybe then be a little bit more brave and then think about how you can uh, begin your journey by embracing uh, some of those amazing uh, points that Suvi made here. So first of all, Suvi and Nikula, thank you so much uh, for joining us today for this uh, conversation. And uh, I wish you the best of luck uh, on your journey. And so do I to all the people out there uh, watching. So uh, best of luck. <laughs>